right now, there is a Mexican on a hot ass truck that paid his life savings to come to America. You literally have people who are dying to get here because of the opportunity. And this is something that I routinely saw when I had my storage auction business. I would, you know, cause uh, I had a very large Hispanic customer base and I would see someone come in cause essentially someone would come to the country and would be staying with established members of the, uh, the family. And I would see within one to three to one to five years, this guy who just got here, he'll come up with a truck, he'll be with a dually, he'll be with his wife and kids, and he owns some kind of contracting business. This guy didn't go to college, this guy didn't even go to high school, but within one to three or one to five years, he has established a better standard of living for his family than the average ind indigenous American. America is the land of the soft and weak. I see, uh, I was watching a video and this girl, she's a lesbian and she was talking about toxic masculinity. And she was talking about Kevin Samuels, how Kevin Samuels had recommended that men work 60 hours per week. And she was like, that's just too much. What about having being happy? What about time for friends and family? And I was like, listening to that. And then uh, I realized, let's see, five times 12 is 60. So I routinely worked 60 to 84 hours a week. I did this for years, not one year, not two years, not three years. I did this for years. And one of the things that came from that was a lot of success and the Craigslist protocols. I'll tell you the story how the Craigslist protocols came to be because I was working so hard. I didn't have time to go to bars and just hang out to hope to meet someone. I just didn't have oodles and oodles of free time. So I started dating in my own pool. First I started dating customers and then I realized something because I had some esoteric knowledge that a lot of really attractive women use Craigslist and I was wondering, did they go over to the personal section? And later on I found out that many of them did. So because I was working 60 to 84 hours a week, I had to create some dating protocols for myself that ensured me that I would get the female companionship that I so desired. That was a benefit uh, of me working so hard that I had to optimize my life. And I see it all the time because uh, Patrick Brinkman, I'm talking to you. You say you're not lazy, you say you work hard. I'm about to say something to you that you don't wanna hear. You need to work harder in the right direction. And let me go ahead and really talk about this in the proper perspective. Let's say you grow up poor and you work really, really hard at a bunch of minimum wage jobs. I'm gonna tell you a story. Years and years ago, I was the salesman of the month at Voice Stream, which now is T-Mobile. I was salesman of the month. Every day I went to work, every day I had a goal and I became, I sold more cell phones than anyone else in that store. Guess what happened to me? I got let go. Very, very important lesson for me. Very important lesson. So I can show up, I can do the right things, and I can still get screwed. One of the most valuable lessons that I've ever learned in life. You want to know why I got screwed? Because I didn't have control. 
you know, I'm quite sure the manager of the store, the area manager, didn't even know, because you know there there was le there was levels to it, there was layers to this, and I realized that I could work extremely hard in that environment, and I wouldn't get nowhere. And you know, it sounds like a story, like you know, a lot of people would be pissed off and like, hey, that sucks and everything. I took it as the lesson was delivered. Hmm. So I can show up every day, I can do what's required of me, and I can still get screwed. I need that, I, and that taught me that I need to work hard in the right environment. Working hard, Patrick Brinkman, in the wrong environment is not going to ensure you success. And this is one of the things that so many people have a problem with, working hard. They're like, I'm working hard, I'm not getting anywhere. You wanna know why you're not getting anywhere? You're working hard in the wrong environment. And you haven't learned that that's counterproductive. And when I started working hard in the right environments, I got success and money. When I was working at business environments, I worked really, really hard. And I got six figures because I was working hard in the right environment. And many of you are working hard in the wrong environment where your hard work is not gonna pay any dividends. So this is why so many people are disincentivized to work hard. I've, I've seen comments on the channel like, work is for chumps, you know, I, I get money, I get money. And what many of you don't realize is you're working hard in the wrong environment. You're working hard in the wrong situation and you don't understand that environments are important. I was reading this today. Do you understand that your children, if your children have a rich friend growing up, this can add 20 to 50% to their income environments if your children have a rich friend they're going to be introduced to things that if your children do not have a rich friend they will never hear about i was as a child my mother was a domestic that's called a maid for those of you who don't know the old terminology and i was introduced to rich folks very early in life i knew there was a distinct difference between the way that they were living in the way that we were living. And this, this exposure, I feel, is part of the reason that I'm successful today, because I knew that this was possible. As a child, I knew that there were people, once again, I was friends with not just one little rich kid, Derek Bracey, Walter Collins. Uh, there was a place in Forestdale called Holiday Hills and this is where a lot of well-to-do black folks lived. And these kids went to bond school and I was friends with little rich kids. Derek Bracey's father was driving a Bentley back in the day. His father was an attorney. Never met his father, but I heard about the Bentley. And here's the thing that so many of you guys don't understand because you, you, you don't want to work hard. And I get it. When I was working really, really hard at T-Mobile to sell those cell phones and I got let go. And at this point, what saved me was Earl Nightingale. I had started listening to Earl Nightingale months before. This is why I was salesman of the month, but listening to Earl Nightingale and taking those principles and stuff and applying them to my life. And I was listening to Earl, and when I got laid off, the guy said, I could probably get you another two weeks. And I said, no, I will figure it out. And I meant that. And this is where Scheme Incorporated was birthed. Because I realized that I needed a better job. I needed a better environment to work hard in. Let me say that again. I needed a better environment to work hard in. So what I did is I went home and I wrote up a plan. Once again, 
Earl Nightingale was in my ear. And I remember he said distinctly, the average person doesn't think. So I started to think and I went to monster.com and I saw a bunch of jobs I can do. And the only problem between me and that job was a reference. I created my own reference, Mr. Patel. I went to a place out in Norcross, something that uh, Google Voice does for free today. And I gave them that phone number of this, because essentially this is the way it works. It was a voicemail and when someone would call it, it would hit my pager. You know, remember the age of pagers? I had a pager in the boarding house and it worked. I actually sat down, conceived a plan, and more importantly, just constructing the plan was huge for me because it was the first time in my life I've ever done anything like that. But what was more important was the execution of that plan. I came with a plan and I executed and I was successful. And I think at T-Mobile, even you know, with sales commission and stuff, I think I would have did like 25,000. Renecrate brought me on at 38,500 right off the riff, right off the riff. That was the most money I had ever made in my life from a job and adjusted for inflation. That would be like starting a 60 something thousand dollar job today. So I was making really, really good money. I made enough money to pay all my bills pay my child support easily. I had plenty of money left over after I paid my bills. You want to know why? Because I had a job that was a better environment and I kept working hard. You know what I did? Because once again, I got this job by hook and crook as they would say. So I kept working hard. I went ahead and ordered this book about cold calling because I was calling people and I was calling people and I was calling people and I wasn't setting appointments. And this was about two weeks in and I started getting scared. It's like, okay, if you don't start setting appointments soon, they're going to get rid of you. So I went ahead to the internet and I looked up books about cold calling. There was one I ordered best 25 bucks at the time that I ever spent or the book. As soon as it came, I read it. I stayed up to like two o'clock in the morning reading the whole book. Um, next day, I started using the tactics and they worked. And I started setting appointments. I mean, those two weeks before I got that book, I set maybe two appointments. The day after I got that book, I set 10 appointments. And they were all like, you know, everyone was like, that's pretty good. Little did I know, little did I know at the time that that book led me because, you know, there were people in the company who were doing what I was doing and their best appointment day. You know, I set 10 appointments in one day. They didn't set 10 appointments in a week. See, I kept my work ethic because I realized that my work ethic was wasted at T-Mobile. It was wasted because I wasn't properly brought in. If I had been a direct hire, yeah, my hard work would have paid off. See, what you guys have got to understand is hard work in the right environment always pays off. And I got to the point where I was setting 30, 40 appointments a week and they had to bring in another salesperson because I was setting so many appointments. And I didn't have to worry about being fired at that. You know, I got to the point where I got so good that I could set, you know, cause I would set like eight appointments in a day. Then I would chill. I would chill. I would play on the internet and stuff. My goal was if I could set eight appointments a day, I'm good. I'm Gucci. And then once I uh, started networking, I was networking with someone else and I went to work for this other company that actually brought me on at, um, 60,000. Let's see. What is 60,000? Let me go ahead and look real quick. In 
inflation calculator. Let me see. What is $60,000? Let's go. So 60 and I was only at rent crate eight months. So when I went in this job at 60,000, that was like starting at 103 adjusted for inflation. So I had more money. And once again, what happened at rent crate what happened at panel systems, what happened at business environments, I was working in environments where my hard work produced success. See why many of you are not successful or you're working in the wrong environments and you don't realize that because you're, you're, you're hitting your head every day. You're going to work every day and you're just like this hard work thing ain't paying off. Mm, it's not the hard work. That's the problem. Having a good work ethic, will serve you well the rest of your life. But the problem is you're operating in environments that are not optimum for your hard work. And this is why America has grown soft and weak because I stuck with it long enough because I did not like start working less. I didn't start shoveling off when I was working those, those chump jobs from labor ready. And if you don't know what labor ready is, labor ready is a place that you go at four 30 in the morning and you, you sign in and you have a seat and they send you on day jobs or sometimes the jobs could last for a week or in some cases the jobs could last for a few weeks. And this is where I would go. And I remember working for this one company where I worked really, really hard and they liked my work so much. They kept me for weeks and it was, well, it, at the time, you know, consider like I went on one job where I was pouring hot tar on a roof in South Georgia. It took like an hour and a half to get there. It was out in the middle of the country. It was hot tar. You go in this building, you have to pour this tar, put the gravel down to use the bathroom. You had to go down this rickety ass ladder to go use this porta potty, which was out in the field. So compared to that, this job, which was inside a not air conditioned warehouse, but it was pretty cool in the warehouse. It was very clean and you didn't get super dirty and you had access to a bathroom. The bathroom was like around the corner and you had a vending machine. That was a dream job for labor ready to be in that situation compared to pouring the hot tar on the roof and Honestly, I think that job site had a lot of OSHA violations. I'm quite sure they had OSHA violations like that rickety ass ladder. I remember one time I was on that ladder and I heard a pop and I saw that part of the ladder had cracked. And I let them know, I was like, Hey, that ladder cracked. And they just went ahead and they, they, they stopped everything and they went ahead and got another ladder because the next person that would have went down that ladder, the ladder would have collapsed and they would have fell three stories. So I'm quite sure there was a lot of OSHA violations, but once again, if you're born here in the United States of America and you have an American passport, you're blessed with so much opportunity, but because you're soft and weak and you're watching TikToks and you're watching the YouTube and you're on the Instagram and you're looking at all these young people who I'm going to say it are cuter, younger and fresher than you. And it's like, why can't that be me? Cause you don't look like that. You know, I've had this conversation before. I mean, I went to school with dudes. I remember this one dude, we used to call him baby. Baby was six, five, two eighty and can run the 40 and four seven. Yes, he went to the NFL. He only did like three years. Um, but once again, you couldn't, I'm like trying to block baby. That shit was, he was so damn big. I mean, you just, you, you know, I mean, 
I remember one day we were in the weight room and dude was just playing around and he threw up 450 pounds like it wasn't nothing. And he didn't work out. Let me say this again. He was naturally that strong and naturally that fast. You couldn't compete with him. Only people who could compete with him were people who were born like him. And um, that's, that's the ticket. That's the ticket. So instead of running away from hard work, because uh, right now I'm selling the intellectual property school and I'm telling you, honestly, you're looking at a three year journey and a lot of people don't like that. It's like, rah, rah, rah. man, I got to work for three years. I want it now. Let me tell you something. I was in that boarding house for not one year, not two years, but three years. And it took me 18 months once I started getting in the right environments. So I was in like, once I got the job at Rental Crate, I was Gucci, I was good to go. But it took me three years of hell of learning and preparing myself to open up doors for new opportunities. So stop with this, I'm not gonna work hard, I want it now. What you need to do is find the right environment where you can be successful, wherever that may be, depending upon your natural talents. Because right now, I have seen this with my own two eyes. Immigrants come here and within three to five years be doing better than indigenous Americans, indigenous is native born Americans. And I've seen it happen over and over and over again. These people don't even speak English. And economically they're doing better than you because they work hard in the right environments. So figure out what environment that you can be successful in, whatever that may be, because I don't know you. I don't know your strengths. I don't know your talents. I don't know your weaknesses. I have no clue to who you are. Someone sent me this video and it was kind of sad. It was this mother, apparently a single mother, who was in the store and she was screaming at this clerk talking about, my, my son is hungry. And the clerk was like, fine, well, I'll buy it for you. And she's just going on and on and off. Now, Here's the thing, and this may sound like I'm insensitive to her plight. Her son looked to be about 10, nine, between nine and 12. If you're a parent and you have children, you know they eat every day. This ain't news to you. They get hungry every day. Every day they're in the kitchen eating you out of the house and home. So this wasn't like news to her and instead of doing what she needed to do to prepare herself to where she could feed her hungry son she was out in public because here's something that a lot of people think that someone's going to save them there's a lot of people who have this notion that jesus christ somebody gonna show up with a cape and the utility belt I'm going to start making moves and like one of the things I see on YouTube and TikTok is these guys who have these people who are doing normal things. Like I saw this today, this woman was selling cookies and this guy told the woman he was $50 short and she took the money and she's like, you know, I trust you, you'll pay me later. And then they gave her like $500 and then I stopped watching it because they come up with this check. All right. That's nice. That's a feel good story. It's heartwarming. The majority of people who need someone to come save them are going to languish and perish. There will be no Superman. There will be nobody to buy your cookies and give you all this money for your cookies. It ain't happening. And this is one of the lessons I learned in the, in the boarding house that I had to save myself. This is why I have this video on this YouTube called why the motherfucker principle. Um, I had to learn that no one was coming to save me. Nobody. It was just me. 
And once I really understood that, because when I went homeless, I started to lose friends, and I realized that when your personal situation changes, the people that surround you, their personal situation doesn't change, so you, you instantly don't have anything in common with these people. So the relationships just drift apart. And you just languish in the, in the no man's land. Cause I was like 15 months, I was going through hell. I was, there were some days I was hungry. There were some days I would go to the labor pool and sit there from 4.30 to 3.30 and not get out. You know what it's like to wake up at 4.30 in the morning, go somewhere with the expectation that you might make some money that day and you don't. I learned very quickly that I needed to have a MARTA pass because, you know, uh, I, I forget. I think MARTA was like $1.30 per trip at the time. So just going somewhere and coming back was two sixty. dollars So if you took four trips in one day, that was five bucks. And going to Labor Ready, going there and coming home, that was, that was 260. And money was tight. So I quickly learned that I needed to buy that Marta Pass per week. And when I got to the ability to buy it per month, that's what I did because, you know, with that Marta Pass, you had unlimited rides. And this is one of the things that I, I, I learned because in the beginning, I didn't understand Marta. I didn't understand that Marta Pass. I didn't understand those trips. And I'd be there shoving dollars and change in the little thing. And, and one day I realized I went so many places, I spent like $15 on Marta. I was like, good Lord. I think the Marta Pass was only 20 bucks. So you, you got to learn how to find the right environment for you to win. Because once I found my correct environments, I started winning. I started winning. In YouTube, I did not know that when I came to YouTube in 2009, I had no clue what was going to happen. I did not know that this would turn out to be what it turned out to be. Joining YouTube in 2009 has proven to be one of the best decisions that I've ever made because it gave me an environment where I could be successful. Well, I could work really hard on YouTube and in the future, I'm going to work harder on YouTube. I'm going to work harder on this podcast um, because I'm in an environment where my hard work produces dividends. So what you need to do is find an environment where you can win. Do not stop working hard. Don't do that because you surely will lose because once again, you have people who have a job. They're like, this job sucks. I'm not going to work hard. I'm going to be my own boss. See, this is where you're going to screw yourself. If you start becoming a bum on that job, guess what you're going to be for your own business? You're going to be a bum because you developed a lot of bad habits. So don't stop working hard, Patrick Brinkman. Find an environment where you can be successful. Because like I said, in one video that I put up here on YouTube, you don't have an income problem. You have a skill set problem. Because right now, we have high inflation, we're in the middle of a recession, we have all kinds of bad things. We've got mothers, you know, videos of mothers like, my son hungry. Winter is here. We got all this stuff going on, and you got people who are graduating college with the right degrees going into six-figure jobs right out of college. So the opportunities exist, but people aren't prepared for the opportunities that, that are out here. So once again, I just want you to think right now, there's a Mexican in a hot ass truck on his way to America and he's going to take your opportunity because you don't want it. Simple as that. You don't want it. All right. So it's August. And we're about to get cooking with the intellectual property school. Once again, uh, tomorrow, 
we got a live event where I'm going to teach you how to set up your YouTube channel for tax benefits, teach you step-by-step step everything that you need to do. So if you're not part of the intellectual property school, you need to join tonight. This webinar will be at 8 PM tomorrow night, and we will get into the things that you can do to go ahead and create some tax benefits for yourself. And I'm going to teach you some special little tricks that no one talks about. And I'm going to teach you a lot of things. And that's tomorrow night. What is already in the intellectual property school will take you weeks to do for you to go through it. Cause first you're going to get access to home economics. Then you're going to have access to the courses and there's a sequence. And once again, let's talk about it. you need to do home economics cause the average person doesn't know how to properly allocate their money. They're big, big meat blowing money fast. You need to get that handled. And that's why the, um, Home economics is part of everything I do because people need a firm financial education because everyone's like, invest, invest, invest. But you don't have no money to be investing. You know, you need about $30,000 a year for the next 20 years to become a millionaire. That's money invested, not your gross income. You need $30,000 above and beyond what you currently make to be invested to become a millionaire in about, because I think I'm average, I take you about 17 years, $30,000 a year. So I'm going to teach you a lot. So what you want to do is go below and enroll in the intellectual property school. So you can start learning these special tricks. So perhaps YouTube will be an environment where you can win. You never know until you actually do it.